Believe it or not, there's life beyond LDL cholesterol. In today's session, we're gonna focus on remnant lipoprotein, also known as the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, and why they're actually more problematic than the super bad LDL cholesterol that we've heard about for the past 20 years. As many of you know, the medical system has been focusing almost myopically on lowering LDL cholesterol. We have people that have been on statins now for over 20 years, yet curiously, there is still a high occurrence of coronary and cardiovascular related events, strokes, cardio, myocardial infarctions, and, and deadly heart attacks, but yet we've been focusing on lowering cholesterol, but half of the people that end up in the ER with a cardiovascular related event have actually low cholesterol. So is there more to the story? Of course there is. So what we're gonna talk about today is the remnant lipoproteins. This is something that I would encourage you to measure. We're gonna talk about solutions, we're gonna talk about assessment tools, but I wanna give you a big picture of the physiology. Let's talk about these forgotten lipids known as the remnant lipoproteins, which is synonymous with the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, okay? So what are these? Okay, so let's go, I know, I know you don't do this, but if you were to go to McDonald's and you get a Big Mac, right? You get a, a bacon cheeseburger, you get the big bun on it, you get, it's, it's dripping with grease, and then you, you get a, uh, um, a milkshake and stuff like that, and you get a, a thing of french fries, you got french fries coming out here. You eat all this, maybe 100 grams of really easily digested fats from all those beautiful industrial seed oils, canola, cotton seed, all that healthy stuff, right? That goes into your stomach. All of those fats get incorporated into these chylomicrons, okay? So these are part of the remnant lipoprotein, triglyceride-rich lipoprotein repertoire, okay? So this is something that, again, we're gonna talk about testing in a moment, but just let's understand what's going on so you know what you're testing when you do test. So what happens is your liver, which is your main metabolic organ, you only have one liver, don't binge drink, don't, drink, don't have a lot of Tylenol, acetaminophen, and please do not pair Tylenol with acetaminophen or do steroids, anabolic steroids. They're really hard on the liver, okay, my friends? But that being said, you're digesting this wonderful milkshake with the french fries and the double bacon cheeseburger, your chylomicrons are increasing, your liver's going, oh crap. We have to disperse of all this stuff. What are we gonna do with all these, you know, industrial seed oils and lipids and all that? So your liver makes these things called remnant lipoproteins, VLDL and IDL, very low density lipoprotein, intermediate density lipoprotein, and eventually that gets uh, uh, metabolized down to low density lipoprotein, the big bad LDL cholesterol everyone's so focused on. Well, it turns out that these three aforementioned particles or triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, the chylomicrons, the VLDL, the IDL, the remnants, these are equally as problematic. They induce clotting cascades. They induce insulin resistance. They cause all sorts of inflammatory processes in the body, and they cause the formation of fatty streaks and plaque within your vessels. So shouldn't we care then about these remnant lipoproteins, these triglyceride-rich lipoproteins? So that is what we're focusing on today, friends. And before we continue on, I just want to mention we have our upcoming Bloodwork Masterclass. It's live. We have two live coaching calls, July 19th and also August 2nd, Tuesday. Check it out. If you want to learn more advanced ways to assess your metabolic health, to support longevity, to lose fat, to become a better version of yourself, you want to be part of that. It's a great course. We launched this twice a year. We had the fall version and we have the summer version. So check it out because we're going to focus on testing beyond just lipid testing. We talk a lot about liver health. We talk a lot about iron metabolism, iron overload, all of that. I'll put links below, my friend. I would love to see you as part of that live call on the first one is going to be Tuesday, July 19th. But let's focus on this right here. So how do we assess this? You might be saying, okay, Every now and again, I have a milkshake with curly fries and a double bacon cheeseburger. How do I know if I'm at risk for this? So this is what you want to ask for in terms of tests, okay? Testing. All right. So number one is non-fasted labs, okay? So most of the times when your doctor says, hey, hey, Sally, come in for your annual physical. Be sure to fast for 14 hours and cut it off right there. It's good to have a baseline of fasted labs, but my friends, this process of forming plaque and this foam cell formation and the coronary artery occlusion that is characteristic of poor cardiometabolic health, that stuff is not happening, friends, when you're fasted. This is happening in the post-meal window. So this is why it's really good to do non-fasted labs, to see what's going on with the chylomicrons, the VLDLs. And so what you're gonna ask for is, you're gonna look, you're gonna look at your triglycerides and you're also gonna look at your apo B. So this is important because 
ApoB is on the extracellular surface of the LDL. ApoB, apolipoprotein B, is on the extracellular surface of the IDL. Guess what? ApoB is also on the extracellular surface of the LDL. Okay? So you want to see what's going on with your lipids. When you just do the Friedwald equation, which is how most commercial labs are assessing your cholesterol, it's not qu directly quantifying these sort of atherogenic or problem-causing particles when there's a poor metabolic health state occurring. So ApoB is a $12 test that can help you assess this. You're also going to look at triglycerides. In the non-fasted state, you want to keep them under 200. Okay? Most people, if they have poor metabolic health, these things shoot up to 300 or 400 sometimes. I've seen 500. It's absolutely crazy. And that's problematic because what happens is in the post-meal window after eating the double bacon cheeseburger and the milkshake and the french fries, those lipids have to go somewhere. They get deposited within your muscle. That creates insulin resistance. They get deposited within the muscle in the heart, which is obviously problematic. They get deposited in fat tissue in the intra-abdominal region, and they get deposited in your liver. So you get all this fat buildup in the liver. Then how is your liver going to detox? How is your liver going to metabolize environmental chemicals? How is your liver going to make hormones and all that? They also get deposited in your pancreas. Your pancreas is where you release insulin and glucagon. You do not want fat in your pancreas, okay? So we need to understand what's going on, and that's why it's important to test your, your levels of triglycerides, and then you can make your therapeutic lifestyle changes. We've, we did a whole video on what to do to how to lower these remnant lipoproteins with regards to exercise, with resistance training, with diet. We talked about omega-3 fats, but it's important to understand that there's life beyond LDL cholesterol. These triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, the VLDLs, the IDLs, the chylomicrons, they are equally atherogenic. They're inducing clotting cascades, inflammatory cascades. They're inducing atherosclerosis. They're causing heart disease and they're causing insulin resistance. Now, it's important to understand that women are more susceptible to the metabolic consequences of increased chylomicrons and remnant lipoproteins than men. There was a study in about 3,000 Chinese individuals that found that women had a stronger association with the elevation in these chylomicrons and triglyceride-rich lipoproteins with the development of, of diabetes compared to men. So we need to understand here, because there isn't a strong connection, historically speaking, with elevated LDL cholesterol and poor outcomes in women. But it turns out that women may be more susceptible if they have this going on, you know, from cheeseburgers and wine, whatever else. By the way, alcohol, it, because of how it causes uh, lipolysis in the fat tissue and stuff, it increases the remnant formation. So anyone who drinks a lot should test their ApoB, do non-fested triglyceride tests to see what's going on with regards to um, their post-meal processing. But women should take note, and this is really important, friends. So hopefully you found this helpful and you understand that there's life beyond the LDL cholesterol. And so if your doctor is pressuring you to get on a statin because your LDL cholesterol is elevated, say, hey, hey doc, why don't we do some non-fasted labs? Let's see what my post-meal triglycerides are. Let's see what my post-meal ApoB is. And if that's not problematic and your HDL is high and your liver enzymes look good and other metabolic parameters, then maybe we don't necessarily worry about the potentially high LDL cholesterol. Because as this recent study that I'll share with you on the screen here found, high LDL cholesterol, when there's also not high remnants, going on, it wasn't necessarily problematic from a cardiometabolic health risk standpoint. So hopefully you found this helpful, just a better, better idea about what's going on within your body, what's happening when you eat certain foods, and then how to assess that with labs, very basic labs. The ApoB test costs $12. My friends, most of you can afford that. So as always, hope to see you as part of the live Bloodwork Masterclass that starts July 19th. We have our second call August 2nd. Hope to see you there, and thanks as always for tuning in. Thank you for hitting that like button. Thank you for sharing this video, and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Bye now.